Reuters on our panel right now. Jeff, we're going to start with you on this. Uh, what is the domino effect? What is the tip of the iceberg here? Because if John Kelly uh, makes the official announcement himself or president tomorrow on Monday, there are a bunch of folks not only in the White House, but we also have to think on this hot button issue of immigration, for instance, the head of DHS, and who more might therefore be missing the person that has been uh, protecting them, if you will. Well, yeah, and you, you identified one right there, the deputy or the, the head of the Department of Homeland Security, Kristen Nielsen, Kirsten Nielsen, is a close confidant of General Kelly, uh, and so they have, they have been seen as sort of a, a team in many ways. She took over once uh, he went into the White House, so she's, she would certainly be one, and she's also somebody who the president has been critical of. Um, and I think, Richard, you also have to look at what will Nick Ayers do when he comes in, if yeah. he ends up taking the job. He will have a mission, particularly if it's only for a short period of time, uh, to pre prepare the White House for the coming months and next two years. To prepare the White House for an election, to prepare the White House for Democrats having subpoena power in the House of Representatives. Yeah. And he's going to want people both directly around the president and at the cabinet level who are ready to do that. All right, listen, Eli Tokel said uh, here, MSNBC contributor, White House reporter for the LA Times. Eli, uh, if it goes this way, the signaling is moving away from command and control, moving away from operational, moving towards election, and what has to then ask, is this the right strength, the right muscle set, based on some of the challenges in front of this administration right now? Russia, obviously investigation going on there. China, we have seen the markets get hit last week. Who knows what's going to happen in the coming days if the deal is hammered out? Congressional oversight in the next two years, the ability to control the, uh, to be on the hill. Eli? Yeah, there are a lot of storm clouds swirling over this White House right now for whoever the next chief of staff is. Uh, you're right to point out that if it is Nick Ayers, the people who are supporters of his, uh, Ivanka and Jared, of course, and others who believe that he is the right choice, uh, point to his political experience and background. They believe that is the right uh, skill set for somebody heading into the president's reelect. Uh, but I would caution uh, from viewing this too much through the lens of moving away uh, from process, from John Kelly's sort of military mm -hmm. uh, style of discipline, because even though that was the narrative uh, that the president was selling when he brought in Kelly to replace Reince Priebus, that, hey, I'm bringing in a four-star general here, he's going to really tighten up this ship, run a tighter ship, that didn't happen. And the most resistant person to that sort of discipline was the president, who escaped into the residence, spent way more time, executive time, up in the residence, tweeting, uh, all the sorts of efforts by John Kelly uh, to keep the president on task uh, were met with a whole lot of resistance. Yeah. This has never been an op operation, the Trump operation with Donald Trump at the head, uh, that has had a lot of process uh, or discipline um, or sort of routine to it. And I don't think whoever the next chief of staff is is going to be able to, to impose that uh, when it's Donald Trump sitting in the, uh, the chair behind the uh, Resolute desk. All right, t one takeaway is to not run like a Swiss watch. Uh, to Jay right. Newton Small, contributor for Time Magazine. Jay, um, one of the, the headlines that we're looking at today, uh, that's from CNBC, John Kelly questioned by the Mueller team. Uh, one advantage is you are getting out what happened before, right? Uh, we're moving on to a different phase, and given that, as uh, Eli and Jeff have been, has been saying, this current White House was not necessarily running super efficiently. No, Richard, I mean, I think they've kind of all resigned themselves to kind of just winging it. That seems to be the president's plan. As Rex Tillerson said on CBS this week, um, this isn't a president that reads in a lot, that prepares a lot. He does, he plays a lot by his gut. And that's the way he won this election. He argues that that is the winning strategy, that it's always been his winning strategy. And that's where he's really wanted to go since he's become president. And he's certainly um, had people who've resisted that, like John Kelly, who's tried to sort of make him be better prepared, make him more disciplined, more organized, but every time somebody comes in to do that, he does resist it. And this time around, you've got a young sort of Nick Ayers coming in, potentially, it seems like he's going to be coming in to be the chief of staff at a time when they should be traditionally, if you're a normal White House, preparing war rooms to respond to White House subpoenas, preparing a war room for the campaign, preparing potentially a war room for whatever Mueller comes up with um, in his final report. And instead, they're really not preparing anything. They're just sort of waiting for things to happen, waiting for things to respond to things, and then sort of uh, 
by his gut, kind of doing whatever it is, he, you know, responding the way that he's always responded by kind of just spinning out different, you know, ideas, different issues. So this weekend, instead of responding to Mueller and Comey, he's Mueller. He's talking about Comey and, and uh, his testimony before Congress, it's, uh, trying to distract from the news of the day. So, I mean, that's really been Trump's sort of strategy and the way he's handled things from the beginning. And it's increasingly just let Trump be Trump. Jeff, if Trump is going to be Trump, uh, and if one of the hypotheticals here is that Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump are strongly behind some of the major decisions here, this one included, uh, as we look towards potentially that they did not get along with uh, Kelly, it is, are we seeing an administration as going back to the way things used to be done at the Trump administration, a smaller group, a family group, and, and, and really taking a step back from what was maybe a little bit of an extension, a little bit of a test to see, okay, I'll go institutional, if you will. It's a good question. I think it's hard to answer until we see who else ends up coming into right. that okay. inner circle. I mean, and, and also to see if it's if it's Nick who ends up taking over. I mean, he has run a pretty tight ship in the vice president's office. That's a, a you know, certainly on the press side as well. They're very they're they're pretty savvy. So he would probably bring those skills into the Oval Office or, or to the the office near the Oval Office if he ends up taking the chief of staff job. There are other positions to fill, and that's been tricky uh, for this White House. They've, there, there are just openings that people aren't coming into, uh, so they will need to fill those as well because there's so much to do in addition to working on an yeah. election, which, of course, his campaign will do. They have to deal with the Russia probe and the House Democrats and everything else that we've been talking about uh, today. Uh, Eli, 